Uh, thank you everyone to be here. I'm going to be presenting my master thesis that has been done in Columbia University with collaboration of Shifu Chang and Brendan Zhou and also with Xavi Chiro and Victor Campos from UPC. So I'm going to start explaining a little bit of motivation and introduction on the top topic and then I'm going to be doing a brief overview on the data set and explaining the two parts of the project that are two independent parts and finish with conclusions. So let's just start with motivation. Um, I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence and computers capable of understanding human emotions. When we think about these topics in general, we think about science fiction movies. And we are still really far from science fiction, but there are new applications and new research lines that are working in these topics. So for example, uh, two weeks ago, IBM, uh, together with 20th Century Fox, presented a movie trailer for this horror movie called Morgan that it's a trailer done using artificial intelligence. So the supercomputer Watson was trained in order to be able to recognize what is scary for a human person. And using this knowledge, the computer selected different scenes of the movie in order to build the trailer. So in this work, we are going to be um, using images. to. We are going to be predicting emotions from images. And those images are from social media, uh, networks, uh, in, concrete, in particular uh, from Flickr. So in recent years, with the growing popularity and availability of these social networks and people constantly sharing opinions on these networks, uh, it uh, it's, it has been growing uh, on interest. So that's why we are going to be studying this. OK. So we are going to be working with the problem of mapping uh, sentiment to images. So when we deal with this problem, we have to deal with the effective gap between the low-level features and the high-level emotional content in the image. So many techniques have been proposed to overcome this issue, but we are going to be using uh, the adjective known pairs that are a mid-level effect representation that were presented by Bortha 2013. That as it known says, uh, they are representing the, the emotions uh, using a noun that is describing the object uh, or the scene, plus some adjective that is giving us some emotional bias. This way we have labels like crying baby and a stormy landscape that are clearly negative, and a, smil a smiling baby and sunny landscape that are positive. So we can later map these labels to emotions or sentiments. So in this project, we have two uh, different, very separate parts. The first part is about building an ontology for these adjective numbers. And the second part is about uh, studying adjective and noun contributions for adjective number prediction. So as I'm presenting this project for a master on computer vision, and the first part is not really related with vision, I'm going to just give a brief, a brief overview on the first part and focus on the second part of the project. So for both parts of the project, uh, we base our experiments on data from the Multilingual Visual Sentiment Ontology dataset, the MBSO. This, this dataset has adjective non pair labels in 12 different languages. We're just going to be using the English labels. So these images are from retrieving images from Flickr using adjective non pairs as a query. That's why a lot of images are noisy and sometimes the label is not corresponding with the image. But that's how real uh, social networks data is. So we are okay with this, we are gonna deal with it. So okay, let's go to, through the first part of the project. We're gonna be building an ontology for the adjective non pairs. So ontologies deal with the determination of rela relations between different kinds of categories. And this is a recurrent artificial intelligence topic because uh, these ontologies are facilitating data interpretation, utilization, and organization. So uh, previous works on visual sentiment ontologies like BSO and MBSO have been already proposing some ontologies. They were clustering, projecting the AMPs to vectors using word embeddings. So if you are familiar with word embeddings, in order to learn it, you need to train on a large external corpus. Uh, also some, some big data set ontologies that you may be familiar with are ImageNet and Visual Genome. 
uh, these data sets present ontologies that are hierarchical ontologies that use WordNet, which is an external dictionary. So the particularity of our work is that we are not going to be using any external uh, information at external dictionary. Uh, we are just going to be using the frequency, the tag frequencies on Flickr. What I mean with frequency is the amount of images on Flickr that we have for a specific AMP query. So now I'm going to be really fast on the contributions. So basically, we created three metrics in order to measure the similarities between pairs of adjective and pairs of nouns using the frequencies. And then using these metrics, we propose two clustering methods. The first one is a one-stage clustering, but we didn't get really good results with this clustering method, so I'm just going to ignore it. And then the, the two-stage clustering method uh, is, is done by doing agglomerating hierarchical clustering uh, using our similarity metrics as distance metrics. So these clustering methods require to set uh, a total number of clusters, and we created some method in order to optimize the number of clusters to be used, maximizing some distance, uh, some similarity metric. So here I show some results for the two-stage clustering method. Um, this method has two stages. So in the first stage, we may cluster first nouns or first adjectives. Those are the results for the first stage. So let's see that, for example, for the noun cluster, we have here a cluster that is uh, grouping nouns related with automobiles, like cars, autos, vehicles, uh, trucks, motors. Uh, other example would be this one that are, are words related with politics, like debate, candidate, campaign, election. And the same with adjectives. So uh, these two clusters have words that are adjectives that describe different kinds of buildings and architectures. And then, for example, this one is adjectives that describe food. And when we get to the second stage, uh, we can group the nouns and the adjective, and we have the adjective noun pairs. So we create clusters of adjective noun pairs. And for example, here we are clustering uh, adjective noun pairs related with the school and students. And for when we cluster adjective first, the same here we have a cluster that is grouping uh, AMPs related with food. Okay, so let's go to the second part of the project. Uh, in the second part of the project, we are going to be studying uh, prediction for these adjective noun pairs based on the hypothesis that adjective and nouns are contributing different depending on the AMP. So here I show four different examples of AMPs. Uh, we see that some AMPs are more object-oriented, some more scene-oriented, so we may think that the, the prediction of these AMPs may benefit from using different kinds of prediction models. So uh, right now, the state-of-the-art method to predict the adjective noun pairs uh, is a single branch uh, network, convolutional neural network. But uh, we propose a model where adjective and nouns are computed uh, separately. We have a specific net for adjective and a specific name to learn the nouns. And then we use some representation of the adjective and the nouns in order to predict the adjective noun pairs. So using this kind of network, we can also uh, <coughs> backpropagate the contributions for each AMP class decision and see which, which part of the adjective features and the noun features are contribu contributing in our decision. And this way, we can also verify our, our initial hypothesis. So let's go through the method. We first have to train two networks, one to learn the adjective and one to learn the nouns. We are fine-tuning from a cafe net uh, model. So from these networks, we are extracting uh, some mid-level mid representation of adjectives and nouns. So depending on the layer we are extracting the features from, we differentiate between visual features and semantic features. So the visual features are extracted from the FC7 layer, 
uh, a lot of works in literature are using these features as image descriptors as they give some global um, definition of the image. But we don't really understand what these features mean. Uh, that's why we also propose the semantic features that we can translate to semantics because they are the out output from the softmax classifier. So they are basically class probability vectors. So each position of this vector is related to some adjective or noun class and we can translate it to some semantic label. So using these features, uh, we, well, we do some preprocessing on this, these features and then we fuse it in a fully connected network, depending on where these features are coming from, if those are the visual features or the semantic features, we differentiate between two networks, the visual AMP net and the semantic AMP net. So using these features, we are gonna uh, compute, predict the AMP in the images. Uh, we are also gonna do some study of contributions. So we are gonna back propagate the contributions in the final AMP class decision to see which features are contributing the most, if those features contributing the most are coming from adjectives or the nouns. And for that, we're going to be using the deep tailor decomposition technique, which is a state of the art technique that was presented this year in some workshop in ICML. That it's a really simple technique, really easy to apply, that was fitting our problem, and that's why we chose this technique. So let's go through the experimental setup. Uh, so in this work, Joe presented uh, a subset of the MBSO data set that is restricted to uh, images that were retrieved from Flickr using the tag search. So we are calling it the tag, tag pool images. Uh, from this subset of the MBSO, we selected the 1,200 adjective numbers that have more images. So here we are showing uh, these three graphics with the amount of images we have for each class. So in the top we have the amount of images we have for each AMP class. We see that it's almost all black because it's uniformly distributed. We have uh, almost 1,000 images for all the AMPs. Then from these AMPs we extract the adjective and the noun. And here we show these two other graphics that we see that um, the, the amount of images for adjective and nouns is unbalanced, but uh, we are actually okay with it because those classes that have more images are also classes that have more visual variants. What I mean with visual variants is, for example, uh, the adjective happy can go with happy dog or happy baby, but it can also describe some scene like happy Halloween or happy wedding or happy day, which is going to be totally different represented visually. So these classes are going to be more challenging to predict. So that's why we also need more images. So let's go through the results. Uh, here we compare our two proposed networks with a baseline that is uh, a, a single branch network to predict adjective numbers. We can see that using the visual AMP net, we are improving accuracy over the baseline in both top one and top five accuracy. And using the semantic AMP net, we are get, doing a little bit worse than the prediction, but this network is allowing us to do a really interesting contribution analyze that we are gonna see now. So doing the contribution analyze, uh, we confirm our hypothesis about adjective and nouns having different contributions on the final AMP decision. So here we show a noun-oriented AMP and an adjective-oriented AMP. So cute cat turns out to be noun-oriented and foggy day adjective-oriented. Uh, <coughs> in this table, we are showing all the things that we computed for each AMP. So first we show the accuracies uh, from predicting this AMP with our three different networks and then the percentage of contribution given for the adjective or the noun according to our two different networks. And finally, using the semantic AMP net, we can translate contributions to the se semantic adjectives and nouns that are contributing the most on our decision. So here we are showing the top five adjective and the top five nouns contributing on predicting uh, the cute cat or the foggy day. So doing, uh, analyzing this 
these semantic contributions, uh, we get some insights about our data set and about our network. Uh, for example, here we are showing two pairs of equivalent AMPs. So me as a human, I cannot really tell if like the, these images are describing better acute cat and this acute kitty and this is like a better describing a pretty lady and beautiful lady for, because for me those labels are equivalent and these images are visually equivalent and we see that our network is actually having the same trouble if we look at the top five contributions for cute cat and cute kitty we see those contributions are basically the same and for pretty lady and beautiful lady uh, it's the same well, like we have happy and thin here that it's one small difference, but not really relevant. Uh, other, uh, other interesting insights that we can take from the semantic analyze is for example, for the AMP uh, sparking water, we see that in the images describing the sparking wa water and there's food inside the water and the water is inside some cups. So if we look at the top five non contributions, we find these two words. Uh, also, our network learned that this kind of image is trying to describe some pleasures, and we find this word here. And for some really abstract scene as Happy Halloween, our network is, is telling us that when we talk about Happy Halloween, we find in these images there's blood, cats, and uh, it's related with adjectives as haunted and dark. So let's go through conclusions. Uh, first, we presented the frequency-based AMP ontology. And we basically propose uh, two methods to create ontologies based just on frequencies. And to measure similarities, we also propose some similarity metrics. And we propose method uh, to optimize the number of clusters to be used on the clustering. So as future work, we would like to create some objective evaluation metrics for these clustering methods that allow us to compare it with some external dictionaries. For the second part of the project, we studied adjective and non-contribution for adjective non-pair prediction. Uh, so we proposed two, two new uh, deep architecture, architectures for AMP prediction. Uh, we see that using the visual features, we perform better than the baseline. And using the semantic features, uh, we can get uh, really interesting insights about our data set and our network. So as future work, we would like to humanly evaluate if these contributions, uh, the, label con the labels contributing the most, uh, people really think that are representing what is in the images. And we can also use the equivalent adjective non pairs that we were detecting in order to improve the evaluation metrics as this kind of ambiguity should not be penalized. And we can also improve the loss function using this information. So in, we would also like to combine the frequency information from the first part of the project with the new models proposed in the second part of the project. And then we would have a new field that would combine deep learning with probability models to learn adjective known pairs. And we can also extend these second part models in order to, pre to do some zero shot learning. So we could predict adjective known pairs that our network has never seen. So finally, just say that this second part uh, work uh, is, is going to be, well, we presented some abstract to do some poster session in WML in some workshop co-occurring with NIPS. So that's all if you have questions.